He made Him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He, that is God, made Him, that is the Christ, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Now let's look at this for a moment. He knew no sin. He wasn't acquainted with sin. He was perfect. Although He came into this world and He took upon Himself the flesh, the body, like our body. So many people think that when Jesus came to the earth, He came in this super, almost superman type of body. No, He didn't. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He Himself was absolutely incorruptible and pure, but He took upon Himself a body that suffered all the effects of our sin. That's why He was tired and thirsty and weak. But the the thing that really captures me here is that He knew no sin. Not just that He didn't do any sin. He knew no sin. He wasn't acquainted with it. Someone asked me one time, what is the greatest sin? And I said, well, I suppose the greatest sin would be breaking the greatest commandment. The greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's why the idea of sinless perfection for the believer is absolutely preposterous. Because if you say that you have loved the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you've also blasphemed. Here's what I want you to see. There has never been one moment in your life, not one fraction of one moment in your life or mine, that we have loved the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. There has never been one fraction of a moment that you and I have loved God as God ought to be loved. Do you understand that? Now think about this. There was never one moment in the life of Jesus of Nazareth that He did not Love the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. We're talking about something so far beyond just keeping a few commandments, my friend. We are talking about something we cannot even fathom. Not all of humanity, not one fraction of one moment of our existence have we loved God as God ought to be loved, and yet Christ did it every moment and every day of his life. You talk about something spectacular. And then imagine this eternal Son of God, thrice holy, 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 He comes down into our world. Now for you, that might not be such a bad thing, but for Him, I want you to be mesmerized by this. But what God has done for you in Christ, He who knew no sin, was made sin on our behalf. Now what does that mean? I mean, some of the greatest commentators in the world have been very cautious with regard to the meaning of this. Calvin said, wow, let us be careful not to say too much. Let us be careful not to say too little. This is, what does it mean? I mean, you've read this text a million times, haven't you? But what does it actually mean that the Son of God was made sin? Became sin? What does that mean? Well, let us ask ourselves this question. Does it mean that when he was on that tree, he somehow devolved and became corrupt in his nature? Absolutely not. Even upon that tree, even at the most dark hour, he was still the holy, sinless Lamb of God. Well, then what does it mean? Well, we have the answer right here. So let's go to the text and look at it. He says, He made Him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. You want to know what it means for Him to be made sin? Ask yourself what it means for you to become the righteousness of God. The moment a person believes in Christ, do they become a righteous being? No, they don't. Because if you became a righteous being after you came to know Christ, you'd never sin again. Or what happens? I'll tell you what happens. The moment a sinner believes in Christ... Something happens. It's called a legal or forensic declaration. The moment you trusted in Christ, God legally or forensically declared you to be right with Him. 
Okay? But now here's the thing that most of the time is left out. This is a big word and you need to remember it. The moment you believe in Jesus Christ, God declares you to be right with Him. And He treats you as though you're right with Him. Oh, what a truth there is for a saint in that word. He treats you. Or as the old English would say, He treats with you as though you were right with Him. Now remember that. That's, that's, that's good news. He declares you legally right and treats you as though you're right. So on the cross, what happened? On the cross, the sins of God's people were imputed to His Son. He bore the guilt of their transgressions. Before the bar of God, before the judgment throne of God, the Christ was declared guilty. Bearing your sin, and He was treated by God as guilty. And in that, He was crushed under the judgment of God. 